Hello my friends and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Android layouts. But before we start, please, if this is your first time here, hit subscribe and like and activate the bell to get the latest tutorials in Android Studio. Also, you can join the Telegram channel in the description below to get the latest tutorials. Android layouts. Layouts are container views and therefore a subclass from the view group designed for the sole purpose of controlling how a child views are positioned on the screen. The Android SDK includes the following layouts of views that may be used within an Android user interface design. If you want to master Android app development in both the Java and Kotlin languages, learn Java from zero and learn Kotlin from scratch, master data structure and algorithms in C and Java, join my Udemy bestseller courses to start publishing your own apps. Get the coupons from the description below. Let's start with the absolute layout. Absolute layout allows a child views to be positioned at a specific X and Y coordinates within the containing layout view. Use of this layout is discouraged since it lacks the flexibility to respond to changes in screen size and orientation. The frame layout. The purpose of frame layout is to allocate an area of screen, typically for the purposes of displaying a single view. If multiple child views are added they'll be by default appear on top of each other positioned in the top left hand corner of the layout area alternate positioning of individual child views can be achieved by setting gravity values on each child also the frame layout is like a like it's an old fashion and will not be used three, uh, through this course. So the absolute layout and the frame layout were not used in them in this course. The other layouts. Let's talk about the linear layout. And these would be used. So the linear layout will position the child views in a single row or column depending on the orientation selected. A weight value can be set on each child to specify how much of the layout space that child should occupy relative to the other child, the children. So we'll use this linear layout in the beginning of the course. So we'll see it and we will arrange the items and the widgets in a linear manner. The relative layout. The relative layout allows a child views to be positioned relative both to each other and the containing layout view through the specification of alignments and margins on child views. This is very important note. For example, child view A may be configured to be positioned in a vertical and horizontal center of containing relative view. And view B, on the other hand, might also be configured to be centered horizontally within the layout view, but positioned 30 pixels above the top edge of view A, thereby making a vertical position relative to the view A. The relative layout manager can be of particular use when designing a user interface that must work on a variety of screen sizes and orientation. The constraint layout introduced in Android 7. Use of this layout manager is recommended for most layout requirements. Constraint layout allows the positioning and behavior of the views in a layout to be defined by simple constraint settings assigned to each child view. The flexibility of this layout allows complex layout to be quickly and easily 
created without the necessity to nest other layout types inside each other, resulting in improving layout performance. Constraint Layout is also tightly integrated into Android Studio Layout Editor tool, unless otherwise stated, this is the layout of choice for the majority of examples in this course. So the main layout that we're gonna work together in this course, it's, it would be the constraint layout. So this is the most important and very new layout that it is in, uh, introduced in the Android 7. The coordinate, the other layouts, coordinator layout, introduced as part of Android design support library in Android 5. The coordinator layout is designed specifically for coordinating the appearance and the behavior of the app bar across the top of an app Android application screen with other view elements. When creating a new activity using the basic activity template, the parent view in the main layout will be implemented using the coordinator layout instance. For example, the floating action bar and the snack bar, the floating action button and the snack bar. The grid layout. A grid layout instance is divided by invisible lines that form a grid containing rows and columns for cells. Child views are then placed in cells and may be configured to over multiple cells, both horizontally and vertically, allowing a wide range of layout options to be quickly and easily implemented. Gaps between components in a grid layout may be implemented by placing a special type of a view called a space view into adjacent cells or by setting the margins parameters. From all of these layouts, we need to make sure and to focus on the constraint layout because this is the most important layout we're gonna use in this course and in our applications. When considering the use of layouts in the user interface for an Android application, it's worth keeping in mind that as will be outlined in the next lessons, these can be nested within each other to create user interface design of just about any necessary level of complexity. So if you find this lesson benefit and good, and you're happy to understand the layouts and uh, work with us, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if this is your first time here. Also, I want from you to comment below what type of layouts is the important layout in the Android Studio. Just to understand if you were uh, and then to, to see if you were uh, focused with me.